Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at uh, data visualization with ggplot and uh, the tidyverse. First we're going to talk about a little bit of an introduction to what data visualization is. We're going to also look at some of our first steps about creating our first ggplots and some graphic templating. And then we're going to go on to aesthetic mappings. Let's get started. So first things first, we need to talk a little bit about the grammar of graphics, and that's how uh, everything's kind of implemented inside of ggplot. So it's basically a, a coherent system for describing and building graphs, and it is one of the fastest ways to actually uh, learning a system and being able to build uh, data visualizations for us. So the first thing we're going to need to do is make sure and have uh, uh, the tidyverse installed. Okay, and so I've already installed it so I don't have to actually do the in install pipeline in here. If you do need to, you can do the install packages and tidyverse. Okay, uh, but again, I don't need to do that so I'm going to uh, go on and clear my console out. Now, again, this has uh, a lot of things that we can do. So um, inside of the tidyverse, we do have ggplot2. Okay, um, and again, this has all of our uh, all of our needed functions. So again, here we can see here that we're using ggplot2, um, and here this is this is the way that you can do this without actually calling up a specific package if you want to. But again, it has this basic um, idea here where we throw in a data frame, uh, and then we have our aesthetic mappings. And again, if we want to have some sort of environment as well as some other arguments that we can use. Um, now. Also, the first thing is maybe we want to take a look at the documentation, ggplot2, and again, that will appear here in our corner. I'll make it a little bit big for now. And again, it is a system that is based on around the grammar of graphics. It allows you to provide data with ggplot2, and again, has all kinds of fantastic mappings. Um, the main author is uh, Hadley Wickham. And again, we have uh, a ton of people that have uh, contributed throughout the years, and you guys can always go through and look at some other um, helpful documentation as well if we go to the help section. And I would um, say that everyone should probably go down and actually, whoops, and actually go and look at, uh, let me find it here, this data visualization with ggplot2. I highly recommend you guys uh, click on that, and it will actually... Uh, automatically download that for you and you can see here this is uh, their basic cheat sheet that they have. Um, I usually keep a, um, a physical copy of this on my desk whenever I am um, doing a lot of plot plotting and everything just to kind of keep myself fresh when I need to and we will probably um, throughout this um, series we're going to make sure and probably go through almost all of this as well. Um, so let's go on and get back uh, to our basics and maybe some of our first steps. Again, we've already gotten our installation with uh, ggplot installed and we've uh, used the library function to call in the tidyverse. So then let's go on and take a look and look at the question of something like, do cars with big engines use more fuel than cars with small engines? Okay, and this is this means that we're probably going to wind up using, uh, oops, let me enter that so that we have our question there. Um, so the first thing we're going to want to do is use the MPG data set. And if we run this, we can see here that, again, this data set is uh, saved in ggplot and in the tidyverse. So we have a lot of information just automatically for us. We don't have to import any data or anything, but we can just start playing with it. This is a table which has 234 rows and 11 columns. Um, this column, um, the columns and the features that we look at here are manufacturer, which is a character variable, model, which is a character variable, displacement, which is a double, year, which is an integer, cylinder, which is an integer, uh, the transmission, which is a character, the drive is a character, city, uh, and this is usually city miles per gallon, okay, is going to be um, into integer as well. And then again, we have three more variables, which is highway, which is an integer, um, um, FL, I think it's maybe our flow rate, I'm not, not exactly sure, um, which is a character, and then uh, the class, uh, which is a character variable as well. Um, now we can also look, and again, if you 
if you want to grab this in a different way, you can do something like ggplot2 colon colon mpg. And that is the same data set as well if you don't want to import anything into your session. Um, you can do that as well. Uh, so, but we are particularly, let's actually go through and let's talk about what we're going to be predominantly interested in. Uh, from our MPG data set, we are predominantly interested in uh, the dis uh, displacement. Displacement, and this is the car's engine uh, size, and it's usually in uh, liters. Okay, then we also have from the MPG data set, we're also going to look at the highway miles per gallon. So this is uh, the fuel efficiency uh, on the highway. Okay, and this is usually, uh, again, miles per gallon. So let's go on and start looking and creating uh, some basic plots. Okay, so, uh, so let's talk about creating a basic GG plot. So first off, we will be using a ggplot function. Uh, data is equal to here mpg. And then we use a plus sign. So um, here, uh, if, again, if you're used to using pipe operators or anything else, um, I probably won't be doing them in, in this uh, uh, series because, again, I want to stick with the high level, um, the higher level formatting of actually using the arguments. Um, but if you had, for example, I can actually write the example in here. So if you did something like mpg um, uh, ggplot, okay. Now if you wanted to add on, for example, something, you have to use a plus sign after. When you start using ggplot, we use the addition symbol. Um, so, but I'm gonna go back and use the uh, arguments instead of using, um, instead of using the pipe operators for now. Uh, so let's use geom point here, and geom point is um, your is going to be your standard uh, scatter plot uh, for those of you that are interested in other terminology. Then we have our mapping in here, and we want our aesthetics. So that's what the AES stands for. X is going to be our displacement. Y is going to be our m or our highway MPG. Now we can hit enter. Up oh, and this here is supposed to be a uh, displacement with an L. Okay, and so let me go on and make this a little bit bigger. Um, and you can see here that now we have a basic scatter plot. And this is again showing a negative relationship with our displacement and highway miles per gallon, so our fuel efficiency here. So, in other words, again, we can say that uh, big engines uh, use more fuel. So does this necessarily confirm or uh, refute some of our, our thoughts and our hypotheses about fuel efficiency, fuel efficiency and engine size? Maybe, maybe not. There may be something else going on there because again, we have, you can see here that we have some outliers here. So we may need to check on that. Uh, we also probably need to uh, maybe go on and look at some other aspects as well later on. So let's maybe go on and take a look at a, um, Again, we've kind of talked about this, but let's go on and look at a graphing template that we would like to look at. So uh, ggplot, we have our data in here, and I'm just gonna put this in all caps. So you would have your data set, or um, we, yeah, we'll just say uh, data set in here. Then you would have this plus sign here, and then you would have in here a geom function. Okay, and so this would be for example, um, uh, the geom uh, plot. Again, we can have a geom smooth, anything else. And then we have our mappings here, and we use aesthetics, and then we have our actual mappings here. And again, this is um, this is actually just a template, okay? Don't be going and typing this in anywhere. I will uh, actually comment this out so we can keep that there at the top. Uh, so if if we want, let's go on and maybe dig into our aesthetic mappings just a little bit more. So again, before we kind of saw here, let me pull this back up, that we have this region here that has uh, some outliers in there, okay? So what, what potentially could we say about these? Again, they have 
they're heavy cars, so their displacement is big. Okay, however, their highway miles per gallon are significantly larger than, I guess you could call this maybe a standard car for some reason. So maybe they are uh, hybrid cars. Maybe they are, um, maybe there's, there's something special, okay, going on about these cars. So we want to maybe figure that out. So we'll want to also look at the class variable uh, in our MPG data set. Okay, and so if we, if we go back and I want to maybe um, do MPG, oh, let's do glimpse uh, MPG. So now we can actually see here that, um, again, glimpse here um, is a function that allows us to have a little bit more, see a little bit more about what's going on. It doesn't truncate our data for us as much as we have before. Um, so we can go on and see here down at the bottom. Let me move this up a little bit so you guys can see better. This class variable here is talking about what type of car we have, okay? So we have a compact car, maybe we have a four-wheel drive, maybe we have a two-seater, something like that, okay? So let's actually make sure and use that class variable uh, to our benefit. So we're going to add in a third variable, okay? Uh, and we're going to use class. So uh, we're going to be looking at displacement, our highway miles per gallon, as well as the class. And uh, so this takes a two-dimensional scatter plot, and we're going to be able to, it's not necessarily going to be 3D, but we're going to add an extra aesthetic mapping, okay? So this is, um, you can think of aesthetic, okay, as um, something like a visual property. Okay, um, and so again, this is this is something like um, let's give an example here. So, for example, we would have something like mm, the size of our dots, the color of our dots, the shape of our dots, um, and again, we can change that in any in any way we want. Okay, particularly for example, um, we can display a specific point. And again, if it changes, we can maybe change its color based on a specific range that we want to, as well as the value and the level of our aesthetic properties. So again, we can make these in all different colors. So let's go on, let's go on and actually do that. Let me pull this up now. Now we'll be able to see everything. And I'm going to reuse my original example. Um, so here we're going to use our ggplot. Okay, and we have our data is going to be our MPG. We're going to be using the geom point. Okay, and then our mappings here is going to be our aesthetic, is going to be um, our x axis is displacement, our y axis is highway, and then we're adding in one more in here, and it's going to be color here, and we're going to uh, have this by class. And so if we hit enter in here, now we actually see here. Let me make this bigger. We see now that we're able to extract out this extra uh, bit of, um, uh, let's call it beauty, out of the data set itself. Okay, um, so we see here that these these ones that we didn't see before, okay, they're a little bit interesting, they are different. These are two-seater cars. So for example, you have your sports vehicles. Again, they're technically going to have a, a very heavy engine. Okay, but they are also going to be significantly lighter than, for example, uh, here we see there's a bunch of SUVs and pickup trucks. So because they're lighter, they're going to get those better uh, miles per gallon, even though their displacement is quite high. Uh, so another thing that we can also do is uh, talk about scaling. Okay, so again, here we can see that there are definitely some... Uh, there's some benefits about color, but sometimes uh, maybe if you're doing a black and white publication or something or you want to change the size that you have of your data, you can go on and change that as well. So instead of color here, we're going to change this to a size aesthetic. And again, notice here there is um, there is a bit of a warning popping up here, okay, that a discrete variable uh, is not advised, okay? It is going to give you that hey, look, this may not be the best thing that you're doing. Because again, if you look here, it does not look pretty, okay? So you have to be very, uh, 
very clear about how you want to do this. And that's why we need to always think through when we when we're doing a visualization, okay? Thinking about the process, think about who your audience is. Um, and so we can even go on and, and change this a couple different ways. So we're gonna use the same, same example again here. And let's change this, instead of size, we're going to do alpha. So alpha is basically going to be like a shading uh, variable. It's gonna uh, allow you to have uh, some see-through, okay? Um, you're changing the alpha content of, of a variable. And so again, notice here, it starts out, at, they're all kind of this gray scale. Um, the two cedars are very hard to read. Again, maybe you guys, if you're looking on your screen, you may not even almost be able to see some of these. Um, another thing that we can use instead of alpha, and again here, you can also see there is a warning message. I would always tell you to mind the warning messages when it comes to ggplot and anything with the tidyverse. They are trying to help you as the best that they can. So if you do see these warnings, go through and try and figure out a better way to do things. So let's do one more in here and let's do shape. Okay, and again, notice here, it's going to give out uh, a lot of problems, okay, because it doesn't like, it only has a maximum of six sh shapes. We have seven. So then it's going to, again, we're going to drop uh, some of our values here, okay? And that is a problem as well. Um, so this does look awfully nice, but again, if we only have six items, maybe okay to use, but we have seven. And so notice here, all of our, let me go back through and you guys can see, when I use the color, nope, when I use the color, notice all of the SUV, all of this pink here completely disappears. Okay, so there are dangers when we are uh, using aesthetics, okay? So we have to be very, very careful with how we deal with this. Now we can also go through, and if, if you're so inclined, we can um, go through and actually clean up some of this and actually changing color. So if you noticed here, let me go and rerun this and do color. And let me zoom out a little bit. So you have this example. So we have ggplot, with our data, we have our geom point with our mappings, and then we have our aesthetics. Now notice the aesthetics here has a parentheses here and a parentheses here. Okay, perfect. The color is inside of our aesthetics mapping. Now if you look, again, we have our nice visualization here with our multiple colors. However, we can also go through and we can take out our color here and we can put it on the outside of the aesthetic and let's do color and let me just call this uh, blue for now and notice it will run this aesthetic and it will give us um, it, it it'll give us something okay now it just it's not conveying any meaning it's only conveying that we wanted to change the color and it does go outside of the aesthetic okay now Again, why would we do this? Maybe this is just about your own preferences, but things that we need to make sure of about our aesthetics. Let's kind of go all the way back to this, okay? The name and the color uh, as a character string is, uh, is an important way, okay? You'll need to actually pick out a level that makes sense for it, okay? Now, again, the size, again, is points in millimeters. So again, if we want this, we want this aesthetic to be larger or smaller, and then again, we also have our points and our shapes as well. So I'm going to leave it off here for our uh, first understanding of uh, data visualization with a ggplot and its aesthetics. If you like this, please make sure and comment, subscribe, and hit that like button. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.